Let me let me get my wallet. Let me see. I might be embarrassing myself, but I'm reaching for my wallet for, for folks listening on the air. Give me one second. All right, I got my wallet. Now I'm going to pull it out. And y'all know it's tax time, so I got a little, little something on me today. You know, I'm balling this tax returns. Right? And so here I got, I just pulled a bill out of my wallet. And I ain't trying to floss. And y'all, y'all know this is, this is refund money. This ain't nothing like, you know, this ain't how I ball. This ain't the daily for me. But I just pulled a $20 bill out of my pocket. And if you're on Facebook Live, I'm holding it up to the camera. And again, I'm not meek milling. I'm not big pimping. I'm not about to throw this dollar on, on, on a, a woman in a, in, a, in a G-string and make her bounce, bounce that ass. I'm not doing that. That is not my purpose is here. It's not to ball. But what I'm trying to show you here is that we should not be upset by white people not killing, not condemning, not attacking mass murderers. Because when you put mass murderers on your currency, when you put white Christian white ring terrorists uh, on the money. So if you go to an Islamic nation and you go into a hookah bar and buy a falafel, and they pull out an Islamic bill, and it's got bin Laden on it, then you pretty much know that, you know, the, uh, the attitudes, even though I don't think bin Laden, you know, 9-11, I, I don't believe the, 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 the popular story of 9-11. But let's just say for, for us who, are, who consume mainstream media and consume the, 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 the government's portrayal, and, and, and story, the government conspiracy theory, because you act like only nut jobs with internet radio shows can come up with conspiracy theories. No, legitimate government agencies also develop and promote conspiracy theories. The legitimate stories, 19 hijackers with box cutters took out a trillion dollar uh, security system, a nationwide security apparatus. That's a conspiracy theory. That's crazier than reptilian overlords. But anyway, I'm holding up a $20 bill. And again, this is tax money, so it'll be gone in a, in a minute. You know, this money will be spent before I even get off the air. So, you know, that's the only reason I got this. Now, I didn't plan on doing this, but I got a prop. I don't do props too often. But Andrew Jackson is a mass murderer. Responsible for the death. And the only thing, he fought in the Seminole Wars. And when white people say wars, it's really just a mass slaughter. A lot of white folks' wars are not wars. Because you think of war, okay, this army versus that army, and they declare war, and they meet on the battlefield. No. When they say wars, they're talking about kicking in the doors of women and, and holding their infant children at their breast and unloading on them with depleted uranium tank rounds. That's war. We're at war, killing women and children, raping women and children. That's war. That, it's not, you know, two armored soldiers and one meeting in the middle of the battlefield. That's, that's not war. That's, that's Hollywood. War is rape. War is atrocity. War is organized, systematic mass murder. But anyway, so here we are on 2018, and myself, I'm participating in this, and we got black people, look at what they done did. They, they arrested this a brother. They killing unarmed black kids, but then a white man is just murdered, and they still try to say he's a child. They found a 14-year-old boy steals a candy bar. Black child steals a candy bar because he's hungry. You know, will get judicially certified as an adult, and they'll put him in an adult prison. I mean, it's like they make it rain. A black kid does anything. If you're 12 years old or older and you commit a crime that could be classified as a felony, they're going to say, oh, you're an adult. But they are, oh, this young man, this child, that 35-year-old man go and kill his whole family. Oh, this young man. But that's another thing. But my point is, white people got mass murderers on their currency. They got people who went about slaughtering people wholesale. 
Andrew Jackson is a king killer. Okay. And I got, like I said, like I said, uh, this is more realistic. Genocidal maniac. So my only point is, oh, I got a 10, to, woo, taxes. Hey, thank you, Uncle Sam. Anyway, that's it. So I get a chance to floss and educate. Can't ask for more than that. Usually it's either or, but here you get, you get me flashing dollars, but it's for a righteous cause. So you, we live in a society amongst people who dominate, oppress, and set the agenda for us. And they put mass killers on their currency. They erect statues, and Monday will be a holiday. They create holidays around mass murderers. So I think subconsciously, now you have two types of murderers in Western culture, sanctioned and unsanctioned. Sanctioned mass murderers are people who enlist in the military, who enroll in the police academy, who get elected to public office, and they go about killing people all over the world and all over the country with authority of the government. Then you have unsanctioned mass killers. And these are also worshipped by white people. Don't think, well, this guy was a murderer. He was illegal. He wasn't a government agent. He wasn't a soldier. He wasn't an elected official. So he's a, but what happens is, let me tell you something. In the next 50 or so years, all these mass shooters of today will be heroes. And white kids will wear T-shirts and get tattoos, and these people will be folk heroes. How do I know? Look at the mass killers, unsanctioned mass killers from 50 years ago. Al Capone. Right now, you can come to Chicago, and you can go on a tour of Al Capone. And they have white men that dress up like old-time gangster in pinstripe suits and a red flower in their lapel and the old gangster hats, fedoras. And they've got cigars and Gatling guns, and they're like, yeah, gangsta. Scarface. The real Scarface was Al Capone and his syphilic madness. And white people love it. They go on these tours. You can go. Come on to Chicago. I'm not going with you. But if you want to waste your money that way, I can direct you to when you come to Chicago. That's why I'm broadcasting out of Chirac, State of Illinois, the sanctuary of hypocrisy. If I ain't told you, so if you don't know, now you know. And I can show you. Billy the Kid, a murderer. They, and tell me and find a white person that doesn't like Billy the Kid. Gunslingers, all these gunslingers, the Lone Ranger. You know what the Lone Rangers, the Rangers did? They went across the, the, the untamed wilderness killing buffaloes and Indians. And when I say Indians, yes, the women, the children, the elderly, the sick. They show you in the movies, they're fighting Apache warriors. And those Apache warriors sometimes were just scribes. They were, they, they were, were, were uh, fishermen. They weren't all warriors. A lot of those Indians were just trying to survive. They weren't warriors. They weren't warrior cultures. Because if they were real warlike cultures, the pilgrims would have got their throat cut instead of getting fed turkey and maize. That's one thing. They said the white man didn't have to fight his way on any shore. The only countries that had killed foreigners on site, there were some. There were some cultures that's like any foreigner set foot on our soil, we kill them. We don't talk to them. We don't ask them what they're here for. One country that did that was Japan, imperialist Japan. And Japan has never been occupied by a foreign force, even after nuclear, well, after the two nuclear bombs. Now you got U.S. military bases. But up until World War II, at the height of world global co colonization, when China, Indonesia, all of Asia was under protectorate or direct colonization, nobody, because Jap the Japanese imperial uh, emperor said, any foreign people on our soil, chop their heads off. Any missionaries, even if they come in peace, any missionaries on our soil, we chop their heads off. Anybody who listens to a missionary and converts to the missionary's religion, chop their head off. And so Japan was never gone. Same thing really with, with, with uh, 
the uh, the Kushite, Ethiopian too. But un, but one thing, one quality that the imperialists, the European imperialists have is that they're willing to send boatloads after boatloads after boatloads of their own children to die, to take. Oh, they're, okay, it's the main, bar, okay. Oh, Lord, look at God, I done fixed it. I fixed it. See, black excellence. Halfway through the doggone show, but I fixed the issue. I don't know if y'all could even recognize the issue. But anyway, back to my main point. They have holidays, monuments, statues, currency, commemorating mass killers. They have two types of killers in Western culture. Sanctioned killers, unsanctioned killers. And even the unsanctioned killers, they're not immediate heroes. But as time goes down, and I tell you, the last time I was on an airplane, there was a white boy who looked like your typical profile of an emo-looking white boy, and he had on a Charles Manson T-shirt. You just go to Amazon and look up Charles Manson. They got Charles Manson shirts, Charles Manson tattoos, Charles Manson uh, iPhone covers, Charles Manson cigarette lighters. They white population is obsessed with Charles Manson and, and up until the day he died every few years or so they do some somebody will go in and do this big interview and broadcast it on mainstream TV we're going to interview with Charles Manson helter skelter movies and books and all kinds of mass media they love their unsanctioned killers so don't get mad they're like we can't kill this guy you know how much money we can make off of him you know how many after he gets uh, convicted whether he gets the death penalty or whether he gets life without parole, but it's Florida, so they're going to fry him. You know, he's going to be getting marriage proposals. Look this stuff up. I'm not crazy. When these mass killers get locked up, as soon as they get locked up, these random white women start putting money on their books and sending them marriage proposals. And then not just the women. What's that one woman that was the uh, mass killer in Texas? The, the serial killer that they execute, and they had Charlize Theron play her and then they gave Charlie Theron an Oscar they were like you played this mass killer so well it was a work of art and they interviewed this woman talking all kind of madness so let's just not do this anymore the next mass killer which will be here in a day or two let me just look at my watch just now you know right now it's uh 729 central time you know, just watch your watch. Just hold your breath. By the time you start breathing again, there'll be another mass killer. So we know the mass killers are coming. The unsanctioned white mass killers, uh, Christian right wing terrorists, white terrorists will be here. And the white people, if they can, sometimes the white mass killer will force the, force the hand of the government, force the hand of the sanctioned killer. So you got sanctioned killers versus unsanctioned killers. And they might barricade themselves into a wall. They might commit suicide, which makes them, or they might barricade themselves in. But, I mean, as a kid, I'm like, everybody white people love is a mass killer. And, and then don't say, because I know we've been taught, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that the white man is the devil. Which is a good, you know, it's a good promotional line. I mean, I, it's, it's good marketing. It helped me to, to it helped me along my path, that conclusion, that analysis. But I hate to say, I'm not gonna say this too loud, but there, you know, there's some good white people. But the thing most curious about good white people ain't got nothing to do with black folks. And I don't mean good white folks because they did good for black people. I mean good white people because they helped to try to better their own people. There are some like white Malcolm X's who tried to shine the light of reality on other white people and tell white people, stand up, you mighty race, you can be humane, you can join humanity as brothers and sisters. So when I say good white people, I don't mean white people that don't help do us. Those, those, you know, that, that engage something for black folks. When I define a good white person, I'm like, are they good for their people? Not good for us. We don't need no good white folks. We all right. We are all right. That's why I tell all these progressive, revolutionary, conscious, woke, white folks, go work on your people. We good. Y'all the problem. But anyway, they don't honor them. Why is there no William Lord Garrison Day? Why is there no Smedley Butler Parade? 
You know, why is there no Jean-Paul Sartre on any white currency anywhere in the world? So not only do they love their mass killers and they venerate their mass killers, I haven't seen a white kid with a Weather Underground t-shirt. Now, Weather Underground, they bomb stuff. They were, you know, they love, white people came to love. They come to love all this radical blah, 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 V for victory, the Sky Fox mask. Not Sky Fox, I say. But. They don't, the real white, they, they got this fictional white mask, the Guy Fox mask. But they got real white revolutionaries. When have you seen a white radical uh, uh, dejected, you know, I wear a Charles Manson shirt, but like here's a Wobbly shirt, international work. Here's a big Bill Haywood shirt. We're right here in Chicago, the home of the Haywood riot, Haywood massacre. The white kids, they're like, I don't want, they honor the kids. So, but it, so if you're white and you want to be erased from white history, be a pro-justice, progressive, revolutionary white person. And they will erase you from their history. They only build up the mass killer. So can we not, uh, let me look, what time is it? 7.32. We're, we're not too far from the next white Christian terrorist atrocity. Can we please stop Doing, look, they, they arrested him. They killed the black boy who stole a candy bar, but a white boy just shot 50 people and they took him into custody without incident. What, the, 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 the pile of dead bodies he left weren't an incident? Well, well, there was no resistance. Please. He had a stick of dynamite between his teeth and a gun in one hand and a, and a bloody machete in the other. What do you mean he was unarmed? Or well, he surrendered. After he ran out of bullets, shooting at you, he surrendered. You know, we know how they do, but they always honor. They always have a, a bit of reverence for killers, sanctioned and unsanctioned killers. And that, I mean, how many more movies? And they get their best and brightest stars. Brad Pitt played Billy the Kid. You know, they'll get like Al Pacino to play Scar, uh, 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 Scarface, which is a homage to, to uh, Al Capone. They got official killers, unsanctioned killers. Blood culture. Derek Jensen, another white man who will be erased from history because Derek Jensen tried to do for is trying to do for white people what Malcolm X, what Dr. King, what black heroes tried to do for us. Awaken his people and get his people on a, a more appropriate path to take his people and their civilization on a different trajectory. Now, white folks aren't oppressed. No matter how much they claim to be, but like I said, they want to be the rulers, the conquerors, and the subjugated. They don't want us to have nothing. They want us to, you know, they want to be the, the downtrodden and the mighty conquerors. They take everything, but that's another discussion. But Derek Jensen, who will not be remembered in white history? There will be no white kids in Derek Jensen t-shirts. There will be no Derek Jensen tattoos. He's like, what do you want, Derek Jensen? Charles, give me the Charles Manson. Yeah, he was crazy, right? Wow, rock and roll said that his culture has a death urge. He said the Western culture, European culture, capitalist culture, white culture has a death urge. And it wasn't just Derek Jensen. Derek Jensen just modernized the, the, the pathos and eros, the, the, the sex drive and the death urge merged together. That's why words like the F word, the word that means to have sex, to procreate, is the same word to do somebody in, to do somebody wrong. So there's very few cultures that merge those two words. They both say, I'm going to F you, means I can make love to you, or I'm going to kill you. And, it, and you, sometimes it means both. They just had that one kid that raped a corpse. I guess he, you know, and they're going to lock him up too. But he looks a little ethnic. He's a little swarthy. So they might not. It just might not. We, we don't know. It could go either way. He could be on tattoos and T-shirts, or he could be hated as a terrorist. Because he looks a little swarthy. He looks a bit ethnic. I didn't look too beat then, because I, I don't really want to consume that mess. But they had a white dude who went out. Or I don't know if he was white. This kid went out with a girl. They both got high. The girl started ODing. She OD'd and died. And he was like, well, I might as well go out with a bang. Literally. Yeah, that's another thing. Bang. 
hey, baby, let's bang. That's, that's say, say for sex. But it also means to blow up or to beat. You'll find that there, in Western culture, there's a lot of merger of death and sex or, or you know, death and, and, and bondage and, and oppression. It's a death urge. So I'm not upset that a mass murderer gets taken into custody just a few weeks after they showed an unarmed young black man right here in Chicago who's a well-known, apparently he was a, a, a rapper, a drill rapper, trying to evade capture. And they shot him in front of his own family. They taped it on the television, and they put it before the world to see. And shortly after that, and they were pursuing him for questioning. There, were no, there wasn't one dead body. They just wanted to inquire. They, had, they wanted to ask him some questions, and he did not want to answer questions, so he ran from the police, <clears throat> and they shot him in his back, <clears throat> in the back of his own house, in front of his own relatives. So being wanted for questioning as a black person is more dangerous than being wanted for a confirmed murder of 17 people. And he killed white people. He killed white people. Sandy Hook, even after Sandy Hook. And let me tell you what's happening right now. The NRA and other white folks are organizing a pro-gun rally. It happened in Florida. I'm telling you right now, the NRA, when you, when, uh, um, this morning, no, yesterday morning, when the NRA staff people walked into the offices of the NRA and logged on, they saw that they had millions of dollars in donations. Every time there is a mass shooting, the gun industry, the NRA, experiences an influx of support. When someone, there is a mass shooting, when there is a mass shooting in, the, in, in, in a white community, when you look at the statistics, the area surrounding and the area where the mass shooting happened, there is an increase in gun, owner, uh, gun purchases. There is an increase in gun purchases. Now, can you imagine that in the black community, they were like, oh, there's gang violence in the black community and the, and the black leaders, the black ministers are organizing a pro-gun rally. They'd be like, look at these savages. Look at these monsters. Look at these. They don't even care about the blood of their children in the street, and they're having a pro-gun rally. And, there's a, and, and, and they're, black, they're gun stars over, all over the black community, and every time there's a shooting, the, they go and buy more guns. These savages, these primitive apes, these monsters, these thugs, even the elderly. Now, if we did that, now, when somebody gets shot in our community, we'd be like, put down the guns. Turn in your guns. You amnesty programs. Take your gun to a local fire station. Take your gun to the local police station and turn it in. Literally, they telling black people to walk towards a police station with the gun on them. Lord have mercy. Listen, the next time there's a gun turn in, I'm going to give y'all an address. Bring your guns to me. I think I know better than what to do with But let's say there was a a black gun promoting organization that was funded by black gun manufacturers. And every single time some one of our children gets killed or a whole cluster of our children are gunned down. We sit down and write a check to the NRA. Where the hell are these people in their heads? We not safe, y'all. And I don't like scaremongering. Somebody accused me of fear mongering. Yeah, I do that. Kanye swore up. You know, if the bloody boot, if the bloody jack boot fits, wear it. 